Hi, my name is Vanessa Ingstrom and I'm a geography professor here at Santiago Canyon College. This is the start of my fourth year here on this campus. I have lived in Southern California for most of my life and to me, reliable water means that I can go turn on the tap either here on campus or at home and water will flow from it, right? It also means that I can rely on the quality of that water, that it's safe to drink for me and my family. When I started thinking about what a day in my life would be like without water, the first thing that came to mind was my morning cup of coffee. Um, every morning I start my day off with some caffeine and then I drink it throughout the rest of the day. So without water, I really couldn't get my daily intake of caffeine. Not to mention the farmers who are growing those plants couldn't actually provide the coffee beans that would eventually turn into my cup of coffee. The other thing I think about is exercise and hydration. Um, most mornings I go for a run and when I get back home, I have a big glass of water because post-exercise hydration is really important, right? And then I shower, so I'm sure my, my students appreciate that I shower before coming to school. Um, but recently I experienced really exerting myself without proper amount of water. Last week I hiked the Grand Canyon from the South Rim to the North Rim and usually there are spots along the way that you can fill up your hydration pack. But we heard that because of a broken pipe, the only place that we could actually get water was at Phantom Ranch, which meant that we had to carry out all the water that we might need for the remaining 14 miles of our, our trip. I wasn't really concerned about that because I figured, okay, I can carry it four liters, it should be fine. It was an unusually hot day and I was sweating profusely and I realized that I was dehydrated even just a slight amount of dehydration made that trip so much more difficult than it needed to be. And I was only slightly dehydrated. Along the trail, we found a lot of hikers who were really dehydrated, like they had leg cramps. One lady was really woozy and was nauseous. And she's like, how am I gonna go the next five miles? She had less than a liter of water left. So one of the cool things about being on the trail is people are our community. So as people would go by, like we gave her some electrolytes, other people like poured water from their jugs into her hydration pack to give her the necessary water to get to the top. Um, so it's really important to hydrate when you exercise or when you're outside um, and you know you're gonna be exerting yourself. When I think about what a day without water would be like here on campus, I think about all the students and faculty and staff who wouldn't have access to a restroom, right? So that's a big issue. They couldn't fill up their water bottles because there wouldn't be any water. So those are just day-to-day -day issues that may be seem like an inconvenience, but life here on campus would cease to, to function that day if we didn't have access. I think about my biology colleagues. We have a SCC food pantry on campus and biology is partnering with them to have a community garden. Well, if they didn't have access to water, we couldn't grow anything to provide food for our students. Um, so that's a big issue. Personally, when I'm teaching my geography classes, one of the things we talk about in physical geography is the erosional power of water, right? It has the ability to create beautiful landscapes and landforms like the Grand Canyon. We talk about how precipitation affects vegetation. So places that have a lot of precipitation can support forests. Places that don't are desert-like and have very few plants bare ground. But we also talk about biomes that maybe usually have more precipitation but are in a drought they're more susceptible to wildfires. Another thing that we talk about, which is probably not quite as obvious, is the exchange of water from the surface of the Earth to the atmosphere. So when water evaporates from the Earth's surface, it becomes water vapor, a gas that you can't see. This water vapor is critical to all aspects of weather and climate. And so this exchange between surface water and atmospheric moisture drives a lot of the natural processes. So without them, if we didn't have surface water, we couldn't have atmospheric moisture. In my world geography class, we talk about hydropolitics. What do you do if you have a river that runs through several countries and you all need to access that water, right? Who has water rights? 
What if a country upstream decides to put a dam because they need hydroelectric power? Well, they're gonna cut off access potentially to the countries downstream. So what do you do? I think here in Southern California, we take for granted that we have a reliable water source, right? We go turn on the water and we get, of the tap, we get water. Well, it's not so everywhere. And sometimes I see people in my neighborhood hosing off their driveways. And I just think, what a waste of this resource. There are places like Uganda where young women cannot go to school because they have to walk five miles to get clean water for their family. And we're watering our driveways. So I think that all of us could do a better job of being better stewards of this natural resource.